to learn in Han Pan. Today's daf Be'ezer Shashem is daf Mem Aleph. And we're going to start from Mem Amid Beis. Um, uh, two lines from the bottom. The Gemara begins. Alma Amarav Ami Amarav. Now, I got what the Gemara is talking about over here is just uh, another statement from Rav Ami in the name of Rav Am. Uh, so it was supposed to be Amar Ravin Amarav because we're dealing with Amar Ravin Amarav from Amar Aleph, right? Amar Ravin Amarav. So it's not, a, it's an unusual group. So they, they group together uh, teachings, even though they're not so related. So Amarav, Ovin Amarav. He's discussing is that sometimes what is your most valuable item that you have? And that when you're missing it, it's as if you're missing everything. So that's what the Gemara is going to discuss. It's interesting that I knew uh, uh, survivors of the camps, that they, they said the most important thing was to have a, uh, a spoon or, or a bowl, something like that. So in their situation, that's what it was. So the Gemara is discussing a similar idea. My Dixiv, what does the Pusik say? The God tells Yechezkel to be a, an example for the people that they're not going to be in Israel anymore. They're going to be thrown out with the destruction of the first base of Migdish and set an example of how it's going to look like that you start moving from your home. You exile yourself from your home. And, and God says to Yechezkel, Ba'ata ben Adam, son of man, take for yourself the clay goyla, the, the suitcases that you're going into to exile. So... Hi, Alan. We just began. Hi, good evening. So he says, what is the most important things that you take if you're just being thrown out of your house and you have only have a few minutes to pack? Okay, we, we know what that is. So you take for yourself Zunair. You took a lamp. Uka'ara, he took a uh, a bowl. Okay. And a bowl was to knead on because you can't keep the food on the floor. And uh, and uh, and then there is a, a lamp. Ka'ara is a bowl to knead on, and uh, v'shatiach, and and when you and and this is a piece of leather to eat uh, to like a, a placemat. So the idea was that you shouldn't have the food uh, be mixed with dirt and stones when you're making it and when you're eating it, and it's exactly what it says in Eicha that when they used to uh, when they were thrown into exile, it somehow came as a shock to them. And they weren't prepared to even take this kind of stuff. And 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 their food, the little food that they had, tasted like uh, they were eating pebbles and stones in them. Then the Pasuk discusses in the Teichacha, in God's punishment, if we don't keep the, it says, look what it says here. You're going to serve your servants. And, and, and that means you're going to go into exile. And you're going to be there with hunger and thirst. Aro means I think you're missing anything. You'll be naked. And you're missing everything. Now, you, once you tell me that you're not going to have food and water and you're not going to have clothing, what's you'll be missing everything coming to add. So um, uh, that's the that's what what is the what is the rebuke that a Kaddish Baruch Hu is saying? You're going to be missing everything. Amar Rab Ami Amar Rav. Rab Ami said in the name of Rav, you're going to have there below Ner, below Shulchan. You're going to have no light and no um, no table to eat on. Rav Chizda Amar, Rav Chizda says, Beloy Isha, you'll be without your wife. because And that's a terrible thing, because first of all, with your wife, you have all the simcha and shalom. And also, you'll be able to endure the hardships when you have a wife. It's easier to, to endure something painful with your wife. And so they're going to separate the men from the women. Rav Shamash, Sheish Amar, Beloy Shamash. You're not going to have somebody to serve you. You're going to have to do everything for yourself. Rav Sheish was a blind person, so he always had an attendant with him. And therefore, to him, the biggest thing to be missing in life is to not to have somebody around. You'll be you'll be isolated. So that's Bechoy Sokol, you'll be missing everything. Rav Nachman Omar, Rav Nachman says, I guess because of the starvation or because of you'll be so not thinking clearly, Beloy Deya, you're gonna ha- not going to have wisdom. So, and Tana, we learned in a, uh, so Beloy Deya, without wisdom. Wisdom is a very important thing. Um, Tana, we learned in the Brisa, you're not going to have salt and you're not going to have oil. I guess this is an, uh, somebody who's missing wisdom, even if they have all the knowledge of the world, it's they're missing salt, they're missing, uh, they're missing insight and, and acceptance of nature. And that's the, the, what the Gemara is saying over here, what it's like to be, to be a, um, 
to be somebody without wisdom. Now the Gemara goes off on a, a little slight tangent. What does it mean to be without wisdom? So that's what B'chay Sukkot, if you, you don't have wisdom, you're missing everything. Amar Abaya, Abaya said, Naktinam, we have a tradition that the word Ani, the word poor person, doesn't mean you don't have money. Ain't Ani Erbadeya, a poor person, somebody who's missing wisdom. That's, that's a very important point. We borrow that term uh, and say that when somebody doesn't have money, he's an Ani. But the real source of the word means somebody who is poor in wisdom. Bemarava Amre, in the Mamarava, they said, and this is a famous song, I'll send it out on the chat, but in Marava, they said, if someone has wisdom, he has everything. But if he doesn't have wisdom, what does he have? If he, if he acquired everything and he gets wisdom with it, what's he missing? You have wisdom and you have possessions. But if you didn't acquire wisdom, Ma kone, what do you have with all your possessions? In other words, some people are born naturally to be insightful and have wisdom. So those people have it all. And those that don't have it, what do they have? And if if somebody works hard to acquire mis, uh, wisdom, then he's not missing. Anything. But if he didn't uh, acquire it, then no matter what uh, financial status you have, ma kone, what did you acquire? I just want to take a poll and describe uh, that wisdom in Deya, in, in Chachamim's language, is Havdalah, to be able to discern differentiation. That's why we say, when we're trying to differentiate between Shabbos and weekdays, we put it by the bracha of, that's when we discuss that. So Deya means to be able to differentiate, and I would like to say that it means that you, you're able to differentiate what you can control and what you can't control. And that's the essence of wisdom, is to know that what's beyond your control and and, and on what is in your control and to, to be able to do something about. So that's what the Gemara is saying, that if you have wisdom, you have it all. Do Gemara. Not bad, now, now we're talking about sicknesses. Amr Rabbi Alexandria, Rabbi Alexandria said, Amr Rabbi Khir Abba. The theme behind this is that if a person, if a person... Hashem should help him that he gets healed from his sickness and goes into remission. It's not like, oh, he's, he's, he's the same person. He's not the same person. God had to recreate a new body and a new soul for that person. And that's why we say, a, a sick person doesn't go into remission, stand up from his sickness, until they forgive him for all his sins. So probably he's doing tshuva and davening. But also he has to start, he's, it's like, a, it's like a, a time in life when you, you come out of a sickness, it's a total forgiveness of a sins. You're like a brand new person that was just born. Shenema, because the Pesach says, Hasoleach l'chol abeinechi, God forgives all my averis, haroife l'chol takli oichi, then he heals what, what all my sicknesses. So healing from all your sicknesses is dependent on God uh, uh, for, offering uh, a, a forgiveness for all your sins. And that's it, because basic sickness that we understand, the way that we understand and believe what sickness is, is a sickness of the soul, which manifests itself as a sickness of the body. That's why Rafa'enu Hashem Vene Rafa in the Brach of Shemanasre is, the Pshat is that we first asking for God heal my soul first, and then the Hale Rafur Shalema Rechoma Kasenu, then we ask for Rafur Shalema for the rest, for our bodies. Rav Hamnunu says that it's interesting, somebody who, who, who could come out of a sickness, he goes back to his days of youth. He has a new vigor uh, in life that was not seen prior to him getting sick. His, his, his flesh, his body becomes like full of, um, full of you know, like a vigor, and full of life uh, and energy. Yashiv Lemei Alumav, he goes back to his, to his young days. Then we go back to the Apostle. This is the Apostle in Tehillim, Mem Aleph, very important uh, chapter in Tehillim, we were discussing that, that discusses what happens when a person's sick and one when a person visits them. So we call Mishkavai Hafachta Becholyoi. When, when we, we describe somebody that's sick, his whole bed has to be turned over because he's sick. So generally, a person who's sick is no kayak to just turn around in bed. He probably needs help to, to turn over. 
But what is this expression, hafachti, he turns it over. Amar Av Yosef, Loimar, this teaches you the and the limudai. He forgets his learning. If sometimes in Nailenu, a person goes through a sickness, all his, uh, his Torah gets forgotten. And the Gemara gives you an example that this actually happened to Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef Chalash, Rav Yosef went through a sickness. He forgot all his learning. It, it, it moved to a, I like to say, means it moved to another part of his brain that he couldn't access. Abai used to try to bring it back to him. And whenever you can, pardon me, whenever you're going to see in Shas, in all Shas, Amr Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef will make a comment, I never heard that teaching. Amal Abaya, so his student Abaya would say, Atam Risani Halan, you told us. You told it to us from this Brisa. So he actually would remind Rav Yosef that he his teachings prior to him getting sick. The Gemara continues. He had a Gama Rebbe. When Rebbe would learn, place Asri Apis Hilkase. He would learn 13 times. Uh, 13 facets of explaining a halacha. Let's say he took a topic. He had 13 ways of, exp- not 13 ways of explaining it, you know, different angles to come at it. I never understood that, but I, I, in the way they teach the young boys in high school, in the, in the, in the Litfisher schools, they only end up in a few blot. And every blot, they teach you all different types of uh, uh Achroinim and, and and go deeper and deeper and deeper. That you, you don't accomplish so much, but at least you see thirteen aspects of, of of understanding what you're learning. So what happens? Rebbe taught thirteen aspects. But he only wanted he didn't want to burden his son, so he only taught him seven of them. The soif chalash Rebbe. Rebbe got sick, and then he forgot all his learning. So Rabkhia brought back all those seven ape, but the Agmari, Shita the up the Agmari, all those seven that he he taught Rabkhia, Rabkhia was able to bring it back to Rabbi. Shita Asdi, but the other six of the of the 13, he Rabkhia never taught it, was never taught. So he never couldn't bring it back to Rabbi. So the Gemara says, Habu Katsra, there was this uh, launderer. He would listen in to as Rebbe would learn. And Rebbe would learn out loud. You know, that's the way you're supposed to learn. You learn out loud. Rabbi what learned what Rebbe, or the other six ways Rebbe learned, the, the other six facets, he taught Rabbi Rabbi went and, and the Katsra, the launderer, told him over what Rebbe, the other six was. Rebbe. And then Rabkhia went to Rebbe and taught it back to Rebbe. When Rebbe would see this uh, launderer, Amale, he would say, Rebbe, you made me and my son Chia by teaching us the six things, that, the six facets that would have been forgotten had you not overheard me learning. Others say, This is what he said. You made Chia. The he also I see, and he made me. In other words, you're not a, my direct teacher. You're my Rebbe's teacher. My Rebbe is my son, Chia, and he learned everything that I forgot from you. So the difference between what he's just saying is that if he is, is, do you have to respect your Rebbe's Rebbe? You have to respect your Rebbe, but do you have to respect your Rebbe's Rebbe? That's not clear. That's why the first Russian held that only because Rebbe considered the launderer as his Rebbe, that's why he had utmost, utmost respect to this, to this launderer. But in the second Lashon, no, he respected his son, because, but his son happened to have learned by this launderer. The Gemara continues about somebody who getting healed uh, from sicknesses. We know were thrown into this big uh, fiery furnace, and God sent out malachim to save them, and they were not burned. So says the Gemara, as great as a miracle in Tanakh, that, that appears, then it's a greater miracle when you see a, a sick person get healed and go into remission. That's even a greater sickness, a, a greater miracle, because generally uh, sicknesses play themselves out. Uh, and the Gemara gives you a logic, offers you a reason why. The danger that Hananya Mishol Vazaria 
was they were dealing with a shell head yet, a regular fire of a furnace of a plain person. Anybody could extinguish a fire. You just pour water on it. So the Malach came and made it cool and, and they didn't feel burnt. They didn't get burned. But a sick person, the reason why he's feeling a fever and burning up is a fever shall shamayim he. That comes from heaven. Who can extinguish that? Only God himself. So what he's trying to say is that uh, we shouldn't take it for granted, although more people get healed from sicknesses, but it's a, it's a miracle that you have to realize and, and not take for granted. And also that it means extensive prayer, no matter what kind of sickness yeah, a person has, in order to get healed. The Gemara continues. Here, the Alexander is teaching another teaching about people who are sick and at the end of their, the end, end of their life. So when, when a person's sick at the end of their life, so it could be a minor thing, and they bring him into a hospital and they catch a hospital infection or they fall off the bed and they, and they, they, they pass on. Because... The, the Gemara is saying, when, when, when the time of a person is reached, that God uh, he wants him to call him back upstairs, every, every part of creation can rule over him. Bahosik says, Tain was considered a dead man. And he told Hashem, please give me another chance. Because right now, once you mark me as a dead man, Anything that finds me has can kill me. I have no power over anything. Rab, Rab says, from, from this Pasek, your judgment stands and it remains firm today. That means God judged the person that he should pass on. Then once that happens, and maybe it's on Rosh Hashanah, whatever it is, then every part of nature is your servant to carry out that will, like you, like I don't know if you followed that there was like there was a, a rogue wave that crashed into a ship, a cruise ship, and just killed one person. There, the chances of something like that happen is a billion. But once a person's din is 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 set in stone, then the whole nature uh, will will can it can is effectively carrying out God's will. And the Gemara gives you two stories. Rabbi Davashela Amr Luhu. For Rabbi Barashela, they told Rabbi Barashela the following story. Shechev Gavra, so-and-so was killed. How did that so-and-so get killed? Gavoyahava, he was a tall person. Rachev Girdoyne Zutre, and he was riding a small mule, okay? So you don't expect anything can happen. It's like riding a tricycle. And so he could easily, you know, fall off and uh, get off and nothing could happen. He's tall. Matati Taira, they came to a bridge. Is the the mule got frightened or went nuts, and Shadya he threw him off the kashachiv, and that's how this tall man died. So Karial Nafshe Karialei, this is supposed to be Karialei that the Rabbi Rabbi Vashil said about this story. Once a person's time has come, he can get killed by anything. It's not it's nothing to dwell on because once uh, once the guard declares it, it anything can happen. Shmuel, this, this is a, like a more of a fantasy story, but it, this is what the Gemara is saying. Shmuel Chazi Lahu Akraba, uh, he, he saw this um, scorpion. Yesiva Al Kalkaroys saw was taking a ride on top of a frog. Why he didn't kill the frog? That's also. So this scorpion is taking a ride on a frog, and the frog, the Avr Nahara, is taking the scorpion across the river. And that same scorpion, when he got to land, Tarkagavra bit into a person, Umayas, and he died. The Kariale. So again, Shmuel saw that as an example. Once a person's judgment is 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 decided, Hakol Avadecha, then he the whole nature will, can rule over him. And that's in, in essence, that's in essence what we're saying that you know man was created day number uh, at at the end of creation. And, and as long as he's destined to live and have a place on earth, then he rules over nature or, 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 or everything. But once it's decreed for him to die, then nature rules over him. Amar Shmuel. Now, Shmuel, we go to a new topic. The, the, the topic of common sense of how do you visit the sick. You don't visit the sick. Somebody who 
who was taken on by a fever. The word chalitza generally means remove, like you do chalitza show, but it could also mean, it's like one of those words that can mean both meanings. He took on a, fe a fever. So who uh, that person who has a fever, that's a person you should visit the sick. La puke mai. So what is that excluding? Who shouldn't you visit? La puke hadetanya. This is excluding what we're learning in the b'risa. You don't visit somebody who has a sickness in his intestines. Somebody who has a sickness in his eyes. Or somebody who has a headache. Bishlama says the Gemara, somebody who's sick in his stomach. Because it's it's shameful. Sometimes he has a loose bowel and he can, he can let go right in front of him. And you don't want to make him feel bad. This happened to, that's what they're saying, it happened to Putin. Somebody who's sick in his eyes and somebody who has a headache, my time, and why shouldn't you visit such a person? Answers the Gemara, because of Rabbi Yehuda taught. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda said, Dibura, Tashi and, and it's, it's speaking to somebody who has an ailment in his eyes, it's very difficult for him to speak, or somebody who has a headache. Obviously, those, those type of sicknesses, try to avoid, you know, visiting them only if you can help them, but not to speak with them. But Umali, it's very good for a person to have somebody to talk to when when he has a fever. So now the Gemara is going to say something fascinating about a fever. You know, there's a debate whether it's a, it's a good idea to take fever reducers. Uh, is fever a good thing or not a good thing? It's a natural thing. So Amar Rava, Rava felt that it's a good thing to have fever. Hai ishta, this fever. He loved the pavanka, the malacha, the moise. If it's not because of uh, that, it's used by the malacha malavis. Because if you if you allow it to to run its course, it could cause, could cause organ damage. But male, it's very good. We go to mem aleph of base. Kichizra uh, like thorns ledikle to a um, that protect a palm tree. So to have it once every 30 days is very good. It's like um, it's like, uh, like aromatherapy for your body. So he's trying to say that it is good to do it once a month to try to get your to try to get into a fever. But Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman says, I don't need it. And I don't need its therapy. I don't need it. I think uh, having fever is a bad thing. So Rav Nachman felt that, you know, that you should lower the fever. Ra Rav felt it's good to have a fever. The Gemara continues. Omar Rav Bar Yanisun Omar Rav Yechiel. Arson, taking arson, Yafa L'Choyla, is good for the sick person, L'Rufusa, Ufuasa, to get him healed. So arson is like, a, it's like a health, it has a health benefits that helps a sick person get healed. Now we have to know what arson is. My arson, what is arson? It's not, you know, arsenic, <laughs> but it's not. It's hold barley that's uh, that's that it's hold barley that hold and that uh, that's done first that the first comes out the, the first barley that comes out from the from the sifting that barley that's peeled. And it comes out from the sifting. That's what's very good. But nevertheless, Omar Abaya, Abaya said, Boyan Bishula came bisri the Torah. Barley needs uh, cooking like uh, ox meat. Just like ox meat, you need a lot of cooking to make it soft. In order to get the benefits of barley, you have to cook it a lot. Now the Gemara says, Rav Yosef Amas Smidi de Sara Atikasa, the, the flour of barley that was peeled and hulled, the Reish Nafya, again, that's coming out first of the sifter, that's very good. That's the flower of barley. Omar Abaya, Boyin Bishula, Kivisu de Taira. You need, it needs to be cooked like, like ox meat, like ox meat, because you can't eat raw barley. But barley is one of those often ignored health foods that really can bring about refuel besides uh, uh, taking care of inflammation. It's also very known uh, that barley is very good for kidney stones. It, it heals kidney stones. So that's uh, what the Gemara is discussing over here. Amr Rabbi Yechen, Rabbi Yechen said, Burdam ein mevakrim, vein maskirim shmoy. If someone has this Burdam disease, don't visit him. 
and don't mention his name. Don't say in shul, oh, so-and-so has the burdam disease. It's almost like, you know, we, we say yena machla, but we don't want to say the disease itself. But let's ex- examine why. My tama, what's the reason? So this is what Mayer pointed out. Amar Abelazar, Abelazar says, Mepneishu kamayim hanaveya. It's like a well that flows. So what I, my understanding is that it's very, very catchy. And because it's very catchy and jumps to people, you don't visit somebody that because you're putting yourself at danger. But the Amar Abelazar, Abelazar says, Lama nikro shmoi burdam. Why is it called burdam? Shu kamayim hanaveya. It's like a well that flows. What they're trying to say is that it's blood flowing from the rectum, and therefore, to say somebody has that kind of disease, it's it's very degrading for that person. So you don't say that he has such and such disease, and you don't visit him either. It, it'll take his course; he'll get healed from it. Uh, but don't uh, don't don't visit him and don't mention that he has it. The Gemara continues: Umar apayir afuas anafish heichakatoni. The Gemara says that let's say Ruvain is not supposed to give benefit to Shimon, okay? Reuven is not supposed to give benefit to Shimon. So the Mishnah says he can heal him. There's something called Rufua Sanefesh. Reuven can provide Rufua Sanefesh service to Shimon. Hey, Chikotani, what does this mean, Rufua Sanefesh? Ilema de Rufua Sanefesh Bechinam. Rufua Sanefesh means healing. The word Nefesh means like you're conscious. You're doing it healing for free. It's another like a strange synonym for the word for free. So if Reuben is offering he free services to Shimon, then it's okay. So Rufua Samamim means Besachar. Then when the target, when the commissioner says he can't offer healing for money, that means he's taking he's taking a fee. So listen to Hachi. So why did the Mishnah say such a funny way? That you could heal him for free and not with taking a, a payment. So it's using an odd way to express itself. Ella says the Gemara, Rufua Senefesh means Gufai. That means that Ruvain is allowed to um, provide healing services for Shimon as a doctor, uh, but, but not, and for himself. And not only that, um, uh, because there's a certain, it's not, it's a mitzvah. And it's a mitzvah that Reuven is required to do. So even though Shimon's not supposed to benefit from him, still uh, Reuven's mitzvah can bypass Shimon's nether. And therefore, and, and also as the Ron explains, certain people, even if there are other doctors where Shimon can go to, but certain certain doctors have a certain muzzle with a certain patients. And sometimes uh, the muzzle is there between Reuven and Shimon, so therefore, Reuven, even though he has a nether against uh, Shimon, has a get nether against uh, Reuven has a nether against Shimon. So Shimon can't benefit. He can provide healing services. Rufua Samaman, but he can't provide healing services, veterinary services for Shimon's behemtay for Shimon's animal, because even though there's a mitzvah of Ashavas Aveda and there's a mitzvah that you're not supposed to cause somebody loss, but sh- the truth is Shimon can go to another veterinarian. So therefore, you can't offer uh, that kind of service for Shimon's animal unless there's no other veterinary doctor in the area. Then Reuven is allowed to be the doctor because you know that's like the mitzvah of the Shavas Abeda. Because if if Reuven's not going to be the doctor, then Shimon's behemoth is going to die. So that it's permitted. It's only when there's another doctor that Shimon can go to. So if it's his animal, yes, go to the other doctor. If it's for his own personal. Self, then he can go to Uvin as the doctor. Even though you're not you're 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 not supposed to heal his animal, but you can tell him some plain some plain you're gonna devise him what's good for your animal and what's not good for your animal. Because that's not healing it, it's just telling him, giving him uh, medical advice as a side. So that's not actually healing the animal, it's not like performing surgery, so that's permitted, even if it's the animal. No Mishnah. Let's say again, two pe- one person's us on the other. Let's say Ruvain, Ruvain is now going to give benefit for Shimon. So the Mishnah says, they can go together in a large pool, but not in a small pool. Because if they're in a small heated pool, then the one that's not supposed to get benefit from the other will somehow get splashed water from the warm water from the other person. That he's not supposed to benefit from. 
And that's that's could be a problem being over your nether. So therefore, in a big pool, you're allowed to go, but not a small one. The Yarshan Ima Bemita, you're allowed to sleep with him in a bed. Now, what size bed? Probably a, a super king size bed. Rabbi Huda, I mean, Rabbi Huda explains, be Moisachama, you can sleep together in the summertime where you don't need each other's heat because it's hot outside anyway. And not in the winter times. Why? Because the guy is giving benefit to the other person because his, his, his body heat is warming up the person that has the nether on. So therefore, they can't sleep together in a bed in the winter month. They can both be on a take a lean on a bed. They can eat from the same table. And I'm not afraid if they eat on the same table, they're going to give each other food. If they're eating for one common plate, then I'm afraid that the one that's has the that has the nether. Uh, that's he's not supposed to give benefit to the other one. He's going to like hold off from eating so that his friend could take some more food. So therefore, if there's one common plate for both of them, they're not allowed to uh, they're not allowed to eat together. But they are they are allowed to eat on the same table if they brought their own sandwich. It's just that if they're shimmering a common plate, they're not supposed to eat together. If it's a large plate that no matter what food Reuven or Shimon is going to eat, there's always going to be stuff left over on the big plate to return back to the kitchen. So basically, he's not leaving over stuff for his friend. So then they can eat together from this large plate that's feeding more than two people. Tanya, we learned in a brisa that a, 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 a madir and a mudar, they can't take a bath together. They can't sleep together. But, but here, the opinion of Rameir is ben gedoyle, ben gedoyle, even if it's a big bath or even if it's a small bath, doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter because we are afraid that um, that that the that the mother is going the mudar the mother is going to wash water onto the mudar, and therefore Ruvain is going to wash water onto uh, uh, Shimon. And even in a big one, we have a gezerah. Maybe if you allow them to go in a big pool, they'll go into a small pool. So that's why it's also Rabbi Huda Oimer, Rabbi Huda says no. It's only also gedoyla uh, b'moisag shamim, and gedoyla means a big bed in in b'moisag shamim in the rainy season. Uketana b'moisachama muta, but a small one, a small bed is muta, or a small pool is muta. B'moisachama in the summertime, it's muta to sleep together in a bed. So let's read that again. Gedoyla, a big pool is is permitted. Bimais hagashamim in the rainy season, then you're not going to sleep together in a in a in a bed. Uketana, a small pool, bimais hachama in the a small pool, or it's, it's a bed. Bimais hachama in the summertime, muta. That's muta. Reichetz imay ba'ambati gedoyla, you're allowed to wash with him in a big bed. Umazia imay bektana, allowed to sweat with him. In a in a small uh, because sweating I guess in a in a sitting together in a uh, sauna is not a problem. Like we saw in the mission, you're not allowed to take from a common plate. You're allowed to eat together if it's a large plate that's being returned. What does that mean? That means there's enough food on this large plate. That gets returned to the kitchen. So if the both of them are eating at the plate, nobody's leaving over from the big plate for his friend because they, there's enough food for both of them. And to re, be able to take the plate back, the extras back to the kitchen to the owner of the house. So then it's not prohibited to to eat. Now basically, our Mishnah goes according to uh, according to Rabbi Yehuda, not like Rabbi Meir who made gezeras. Okay. By the way, what was 